Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak now in the name of one who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I did not grow up in the Episcopal Church. I've said that to you before. Um, but I loved my church. It was a wonderful place full of people who became family and adults who cared for me, a place that taught me to pray. I just loved it. I felt very holy and joyful and good in that place. And to be honest with you, because I felt so good in that church tradition going up, I was pretty sure that we had it right. I remember one day walking towards the parish hall, which was my favorite place because cookies were there, of course. It's the secret to evangelism, cookies. I saw this woman who had had a hand in raising me, who I had known in church for a very long time, and we started chatting. I was in high school, I think. And she told me that she was getting ready to go to a very special occasion that afternoon. She had a friend who was going to be ordained an Episcopal priest. And we both grimaced. She said, yeah, I don't really get it, but I'm gonna go and be there for her because it's really important to her. And we had this little exchange where we both kind of understood that, you know, like we had it right and, you know, poor woman was gonna become an Episcopal priest and she didn't really have it figured out. Too bad she didn't come join our church, you know? It was a lot, I don't know if we said all of that out loud, but we could read each other's eyes in that, in that way, which is pretty silly because obviously, look at me now. But I had this moment of just hearing about somebody else's experience in church and not understanding it, and so without even really recognizing it, invalidating that experience in a split second. I thought of another time, too, fast forward 20 years later or so, and I was working in a church, and 
we were trying to develop a worship experience for kids, and they had this whole little mini church that was just for them. Because as you know, young children, they play. They explore the world through play. They need to have dramatic play, figuring out what it means to be a human being. So we, we created something like that for the little kids. They had a tiny altar and a tiny chalice, all sorts of tiny church things, and we got somebody to sew little itty-bitty chasubles. This is a chasuble, if you don't know this fancy church language. They had little, little itty-bitty chasubles, and they were deep in play. They were acting the whole thing out, praying and handing out their little pretend communion. And it was awesome because really what was play for them was real prayer. And we were filled with joy. But this woman who goes to the church and was so faithful and devoted to the church came by and saw the little ones in their tiny chasubles and she was so offended because those little kids were not priests and only priests wear chasubles. And so she tried to get us to take those chasubles out of our children's chapel. It was really sad because this woman who was legitimately faithful totally missed what was happening with the kids. She totally missed the point and tried to remove something that was a great entry into prayer for them. I say these two stories today, I share them with you because they're both stories of stumbling blocks in faith. And we hear about stumbling blocks of faith in this gospel reading for today. The disciples had found someone who was casting out demons in Jesus' name, but they didn't know who he was. He wasn't one of them. He wasn't in their group. And so they go to Jesus and say, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. We tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If you think back over the last couple of weeks, Jesus has been preaching about welcoming the nobodies. Think about the story of him bringing a child right into the middle of the disciples. And in those days, children really had no social status. We didn't idealize childhood at all in those days. And, and Jesus was really saying that we have to welcome the vulnerable, the nobodies in our midst. And here we have a case in which a nobody, somebody on the outside of the inner circle, someone who they didn't know, who didn't have the name of a disciple, was doing ministry in Jesus' name. And the disciples were upset about it, but I think they missed the point again. And Jesus had some strong words for them. He said, if any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of heaven with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell. Ouch. Well, lucky for us, I'm pretty sure that Jesus was speaking in metaphor, I think, I hope. But he means what he says in spirit. He means that we need not put stumbling blocks of faith in front of anybody when they're coming to life in Christ. Well, I have not had to encounter anybody who is casting out demons who I did not know. That is not something that is happening in my daily life. But there are a lot of times, I think, when we put stumbling blocks in front of other people or even stumbling blocks in front of our own faith lives. All those years ago, when 
I was in the hallway of my church and we were being so judgy about somebody being ordained in the Episcopal tradition of which I would one day be ordained as well. We put a stumbling block in front of her, not approving of her faith, but really we were putting stumbling blocks in front of our own faith as well. We're the ones who missed out on something extraordinary. Imagine if we hadn't done that. Imagine if we took some time to understand what this person was going through. I might have found my true church home a little earlier. And later on, when we were gathering with children in a children's chapel, this, this woman who was so devout and faithful and true and committed to her life in Christ, she missed out on bearing witness to what these kids were up to and their lively faith. She was trying to kind of put a stumbling block in front of them by removing those little tiny chasubles from children's chapel. But really, I think, she put a stumbling block in her own faith because she missed out on something wonderful in those kids. We human beings are constantly, I think, putting stumbling blocks in front of our own faith or the faith lives of other people. And we don't mean to. We don't mean to at all. We barely realize that we're doing it. But we complicate matters so darn much. But I think Jesus wasn't trying to complicate life and faith. I think he was trying to simplify life and faith and help us to focus on what really, really matters, on the presence of God, the God of love who is with us. I think we're invited to remember that God is love alone. And yes, all the traditions are awesome. Obviously, I love tradition. I'm an Episcopalian. We have really good rituals, and they're beautiful. But it's not the be-all, end-all. You don't have to be a person in this church to get to Christ. There's lots of ways. So we need to remember to simplify and focus on God, who is love. God, who is love alone. God is love alone. God is love alone. Amen. And now, let us stand and affirm our faith in these ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For peace in the world and the liberation of all people, Lord, hear us. That the leaders of the churches, especially our Rector Krista, our Bishop Kim, and our presiding Bishop Michael, may tirelessly, tirelessly seek visible unity among Christians, Lord, hear us. For honesty in political life, 
for our Governor Jared and our President Joe that they may work for justice in society. Lord, hear us. For those who toil to earn their daily bread, Lord, hear us. For those without work or resources, Lord, hear us. For those with no family or home, Lord, we pray. For those who suffer from loneliness or abandonment, Lord, hear us. For those who are oppressed or maligned, Lord, hear us. For those who work with the poor, with foreigners, and with the excluded, Lord, we pray. Lord, hear us. For those on our parish prayer list, Sheila, Domi, Loretta, Angie, Dan, Debbie, Felix, Greg, Lynn, Susie, Joanna, Jim, Sandy, Eric, Judy, Jana, Ken, Hannah, Johnny, Nicole, John, Eddie, Karen, Phyllis, Maggie, Sandra, Tina, Will's children, Gretchen, Sharon, Marsha, Don, Joanne, Rob, Babette, Ski, Kate, Don, Justin, Candy. All those suffering with mental health issues, clergy, healthcare workers, hospital chaplains, funeral directors, and all those affected by COVID-19. For whom else should we pray? You may offer your prayers silently or aloud. We ask that you hold these prayers submitted by you, the people of St. Luke's. Lord, let us care for refugees, those living on the edges of our world with no homes and an uncertain future. Let us, as we are able, step up and open ourselves to help them find their way in a new and strange land. For the people of Haiti, both displaced and on the island, for those in Afghanistan facing fear and uncertainty, for our new youth director, Diane, and our new deacon, David. Eternal God, the light of all who know you, come and fill our hearts with your love. Help us speak when many keep silent. Help us stand for what is right when many sit in indifference. Increase our faith and charity until your kingdom comes and heaven and earth rejoice in everlasting glory. Through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And when you're finished greeting one another, you may have a seat. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to be worshiping with you, whether you're here in person or joining us online. I'm so thankful to be a part of this community of faith. There are a number of exciting things going on in this place. First, I hope you saw our email announcement about some updates in our clergy and staff. We have a new director of youth ministry, Diane Stapleton. Would you stand up? I'm going to put you on the spot. Welcome. Let's welcome Diane. <laughs> Diane joins us from Illinois. She just moved here a few weeks ago and really has a strong sense of call to children and youth ministry. And she'll be working with our middle and high school students here at St. Luke's and also at St. Paul's down the road. We're so excited. And we'll have a movie night tonight at 6 o'clock for you who are in youth group. We'll have dinner. It will be fun. And I hope you'll say hello to Diane at coffee hour outside afterwards. Thank you, Diane. Welcome. We will also be welcoming in a few weeks a new deacon named David Musser. Uh, he is a transitional deacon, or will be a transitional deacon. If you don't know, I'll explain our orders of ministry to you as quickly as I can. We have four orders. We have the order of laity, lay ministry, deacons, priests, and bishops. D 
deacon comes from the Greek word diakonia, which is like a menial table waiter. Deacons really are people who are called to serve in the world. They often uh, are bivocational, so they work in the world doing things like, I, I know some deacons who are social workers and teachers, um, prison chaplains, police officers. They do things like that, service work. And they bring the church to the world and they bring the world back to the church. Now, when you're going to become a priest, you are ordained deacon first. So all of us who are priests in the Episcopal Church are deacons for at least six months before we're ordained to the priesthood so that that ministry of service is really um, our grounding in ministry. So David Musser lives in Greeley, and he will be ordained to the transitional diaconate, meaning he's going to become a priest later on, uh, on October 23rd. And then he will be ordained a priest, God willing, next summer. And for that time that he's a transitional deacon, is going to be placed with us, the bishop has placed him with us, so that we might um, learn from him and he will learn from us and be formed here. You all should be very proud that our bishop has chosen St. Luke's to be the place for him to be a transitional deacon. I can't wait for his ministry to begin with us um, at the end of October, so stay tuned and we'll welcome him soon. On the back page of your bulletin, there are a whole lot of announcements. Lots of fun things coming up. Right after this service, we're gonna try something new. We're calling it Thing for the People. If you'd like to stick around, head down to the parish hall, grab a chair, and meet us on the West Lawn. We're gonna practice a few hymns together, and we hope that then we might take those hymns and sing them in the community when the community needs music and Christ's light. We don't know what will happen in the next few months, but we know that there are times when the beauty of God's love shared in music is needed, and it will be meaningful to go out there and sing. So we're just going to practice a few different hymns today. No singing experience necessary. All ages are welcome. We'll be safely distanced outside to sing, and we'll just have a lot of fun, first of all. And then if you brought a picnic lunch, Pull out your lunch and we'll share in some lunch together out on the lawn. Our book study on the cost of discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer will begin this Wednesday and run every Wednesday on Zoom at 6 p.m. Uh, until October 27th. So there's still time to sign up for that if you would like. Bibles, brews, and haikus I hear is awesome. And they will be continuing. Woo, yeah, we got them in the back. <laughs> on Friday on the lawn at 6 o'clock. And then uh, one week from today is the Feast of St. Francis. Next Sunday, we'll be observing the Feast of St. Francis. So if you have scaly, furry, feathery pets or stuffed animals, you know, some, I know some families don't have live pets, but we'll take the stuffed ones too. We'll be meeting outside at 4 o'clock for the blessing of the animals. And all of the services that day will be themed around creation and care of creation because St. Francis was somebody who saw and felt God's presence in creation. He saw God in a flower and in the animals, and it's really a part of Franciscan spirituality to be in nature. So all of the services that day will have a creation theme, as we in Colorado know very well, God is present in nature with us. And also, we need to pray for creation because it's not doing so well right now. So next week will be special. Make sure you take a look at the bulletin and read about all of the things going on. I hope you'll participate. Last but not least, if you're here visiting, fill out one of these welcome cards. They're on the Usher check-in table right outside. You can leave it on the table so that we get all of your contact info and we can make sure you stay in the loop with everything that's going on in this house of God. And now, we will prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion with this offering of music.
Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away, and yet, as a mother cares for her creation, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with St. Luke and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Behold who you are. 
become what you receive. You may now pull your masks down for communion. And in solidarity with those who are still worshiping from home, acknowledging the fact that as we long for Christ, wherever we are, we are one with Christ. Let us pray together this prayer for spiritual communion. Lord of the feast, may we be reminded of the many times we have been fed at your table, always being drawn closer to you in the breaking of the bread. We acknowledge your presence among us, just as you were present with your disciples. May your Holy Spirit continue to strengthen us to live, learn, and love beyond our walls for the sake of your love in our lives forever and ever. Amen. And now let us join in the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you and loves you as a mother. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.